an inspirational way to think and interact with this very special place we call Cascadia. Be sure to visit the website Cascadia Matters and check out the film for more intimate connection to the land and its significance. You know, Sherry, having the right attitude about things is essential, but if you don't act on it, it doesn't go very far. That's why here in the Portland area, we have a regional governing body that bridges the gap between conservation and the demands of urban living. Metro is responsible for places like what you see behind us. Metro's motto is making a better place, and as you'll see, they have a number of programs to help keep this place livable and sustainable. Hi, I'm Jason Rashke with Sustainable Today. We're here today at Kanima Bluff in Oregon City, meeting with Carlotta Collette of the Metro Regional Council. Hi, Carlotta. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what Metro does? Uh, Metro is the regional government because there are a lot of issues that are, are not just local, they're regional. Things like protecting air quality, protecting water quality, handling the region's garbage system, recycling system, planning how we grow, um, and I think in particular the transportation planning so that it's all a connected system. Those are all part of Metro's responsibilities. We also own the uh, convention center, the expo center, the Oregon Zoo, and about 16,000 acres of land um, all around the region that we have acquired, thanks to the voters, to protect air quality, water quality, and a connected habitat around our region. Uh, the region needs a metro because we have state laws that protect our farms and our forests in small towns, and the metro regional government oversees the what's called the urban growth boundary. We've been able to develop in this community using far less land than we would have if we did not have an urban growth boundary. Our population has expanded a lot as people live here know, but while we've expanded our population we have not expanded the urban growth boundary that much and almost all the development that we've done in this region has been within the first urban growth boundary. So we've learned how to build really cool places to live to get around without having to go far out into the suburbs. Think regionally, act locally <laughs> is kind of what it amounts to, is how do, we, how do we help folks in their community act locally while they're thinking about how they're connected up to the bigger region. Because honestly, birds, they don't care what city you live in or what neighborhood, the clean air and water, it flows through them all. So somebody needs to be taking that view, that perspective on how are we connected what are the things we all rely on? What are the things that we have to take care of as a region? And that's what Metro tries to do. We have a program, for example, called Regional Travel Options that helps people figure out how to get around without using their cars. Um, it coordinates carpooling, it coordinates, uh, it enables people to take bikes, uh, things like that. We have a number of parks-related projects, and Kanima is an example of a number of those actually. Because of the voters, in 1995 and 2006, voters approved issuing bonds to buy natural areas, parks, areas around the region that we wanted to protect. Some of them because they are like the Willamette, they're a source of water, they're an amazing just sorts, cultural source for the region. This is an area that we value very much. We wanted to be able to protect kind of the view shed of the Willamette so that when you look across you don't just see shopping malls and development, you see a lot of green. Uh, Kanima Bluffs is a good example of that. We also have a program that was just approved by the voters, um, a levy to help us maintain and restore areas. And some of that money will go to this park as well to help restore it, to create a system of trails here. But mostly this will stay as a natural area. We have a capital grants program that people in communities can apply for grants to help them work on their parks and places like, um, for example, the Park Avenue light rail station that's being designed and built right now. Part of the new design to make it super green, super efficient, handling stormwater, connecting to a forest, connecting to the trolley trail, some of that money to help with that design came through a Metro grant. We also have grants to cities to help them plan how are they gonna fix up their downtowns or their industrial areas, employment areas. So we have a number of programs. And when we started all of this, we re weren't really talking about sustainability. It, originally, it was about protecting our farms, protecting our forests, protecting the small towns outside the urban growth boundary. 
as we got along on it, we realized building the transit system, keeping people in compact, fun communities, places where they can walk to, also was really good for the air quality, for controlling limiting pollution, um, for making us a sustainable region. I think Oregon has always been identified as kind of the frontier. It's the, one of the last places that people developed and moved to. Honestly, I think people around the world, those who know about Oregon, think of it first as this incredible outdoorsy space. Um, and then they think of it as sustainability. And it is absolutely a part of our cultural heritage. We have a long standing heritage of protecting our farms, protecting our forests, because we are a natural resource-based economy as a state. We were one of the first states in the country um, to actually have land use laws and planning. Planning was a big part of that. In this region, Metro is the entity that helps with that land use planning part. Of how can we use our land most efficiently? But also just because this is such a beautiful place. I mean, this is, this is why we do the land use planning. It's, it's a beautiful place and we wanna keep it that way.